Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, I'll be showing you an easy way of how to draw Lewis structures. I've written the steps right here, and while it looks like there's a lot of steps, it's actually pretty intuitive and pretty easy, and we're going to walk through these steps of three examples. For the first example, let's draw Lewis, the Lewis structure of CH2Br2. So here, the first step is to count the total number of valence electrons. I'm going to write carbon, we have two hydrogens, and then we have one, uh, two bromine. So carbon has four valence electrons, and how do I know that? You take a look at the periodic table and see which column is that element in. The carbon you can see is in the fourth column, one, two, three, four. You skip the transition metal, so you see carbon's in the fourth column, so carbon has four valence electrons. Then hydrogen has one valence electron, but because we have two of them, we have to multiply by two. And then bromine has seven valence electrons because it's in that seventh column of the periodic table. Um, it's a halogen. And we have two of them, so multiply that by two, add it together. So this will be four uh, plus two plus 14, giving us a total of 20 valence electrons. That's step number one. Step number two, you're going to connect all the atoms of single bonds. And the rules for here, the biggest one, aim for symmetry. Um, usually that, that will help you determine which one's going to be the, the central atom. Carbon, if there's presence, is always going to be in the middle. Hydrogen is always going to be terminal, which means it's going to be at the end. And then the least electronegative atom tends to be central. So if you're here, this one, CH2Br2, you see that we have a carbon, so we know that carbon mm -hmm. is then going to be in the middle. And then we're going to put the rest of the, the remaining atoms around it. So we have hydrogen, hydrogen, bromine, and bromine. And it actually didn't, doesn't really matter if I put the hydrogens directly across from each other or next to them. Um, so the next, we're going to add in lone pairs such that every atom has an octet. Every atom that wants to have an octet has an octet. So carbon already currently has an octet. Octet just means it has eight valence electrons around it. You can see carbon um, already has eight because each of these bonds means two electrons. And you can say two, four, six, eight. Carbon already has eight. Bromine right here currently only has two because it only has um, one bond. So we have to put six electrons around it to make it so then it has eight electrons. This bromine also needs six. And then hydrogen is perfectly happy having two uh, valence electrons. So we don't need to put any any more lone pairs on hydrogen. Then moving on to step number four, we're going to count the total number of electrons in the Lewis structure and compare that number to the one the number we got in step one. So we're going to count the total number of electrons here. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and then match up the number we got here, we got 20. So because these numbers match up, then that means we're done, and this is the Lewis structure of CH2Br2. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to another example where we actually have to use step five or step six. So the next example we're gonna look at is HCN. First step, count the total number of valence electron, H, C, N, H, one valence electron, carbon, there's four valence electron, and then nitrogen, there's five valence electrons. Add that together, we get a total of 10 valence electron. Then, sec second step, connect all atoms of single bonds. Again, we have carbon, so then we know that carbon is going to be in the middle, and then the hydrogen and the nitrogen, we're just going to attach to the carbon of single bonds. Next step, add a lone pair such that every atom that wants to have an octet has an octet. So carbon currently only has four valence four electrons around it, and we have to add two more to make it happy, such that it has an octet. Nitrogen currently only has the two electrons on the bond around it right now, so we need to add three more to make it so it also has an octet. And the hydrogen's already happy because it has two valence electrons. Number four, count the total number of valence electrons in the loose structure and compare it to the number from step one. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So in this structure, we have 14 valence electron, but we're only supposed to have 10. So we have too many valence electrons, then that's where we start forming double bonds or triple bonds. And for this shortcut, the way to form the double bonds, say we want to form a double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen, then I have to erase a lone pair from each of those atoms before I can form a double bond. 
Then I'm going to recount 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So now I have 12, but I want to get to 10. So I still have too many, meaning I'm going to form another bond. So I'm going to erase another lone pair from the carbon and another one from the nitrogen to form the triple bond. And then after I do that, recount the number of electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and that matches up. So then that's the final structure of HCN. Making sense? Now hopefully this is. And let's do one final example. And for the last example, whoops, uh, erase this. So for the last final example, let's take a look at BRF5. First step, count the total number of valence electron. Each of these are our halogens. Um, so each of them, they're, they're going to have seven. And we have, um, we have five fluorines, which gives us 35 plus the seven from the bromine, giving us a total of 42 valence electron. And the second step, connect everything, uh, all the atoms of single bonds, such that uh, everything has, or so connect all the atoms of single bonds. And we're going to aim for symmetry. So we're going to put bromine in the middle and we're going to have the five fluorines attached to the bromines of single bonds. Next step, fill in lone pairs such that everything has an octet. Um, and each of these fluorine currently only have two electrons around them, so I have to add six to each to give them eight. And if you look at bromine right here, bromine currently has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. Wait, that is, don't everything just want to have eight valence electron? Why is bromine okay with having ten valence electron? Because there are exceptions to, to the octet rule. Uh, bromine, if you can see right here, it's, it's, uh, whoops, it's uh, in the fourth row of the periodic table. So any element that's in the third row of the periodic table or below can have more than eight valence electron. So that's why bromine is okay having 10 right now. Then next, we're gonna count the total number of electrons and match it up. Um, and then when you do count the total number of electrons here, you get 40. So then we're, we go to step six. We don't have enough electrons. So if we don't have enough, then we're gonna add lone pairs to the central atoms to, to get enough. So you can see we're missing two, meaning we just have to add a lone pair. And then when we do that, we, we get a total of 42 valence electrons, which matches up with the number that we uh, determined. And so that means this is the correct Lewis structure for BRF5. All right, so we just went through three examples um, of different scenarios. The first scenario where the valence electrons match up. The second scenario where there's too many valence electrons, so we have to form double or triple bonds. And then the last example where there wasn't enough valence electrons, so we have to add additional electrons onto the lone pair. Hopefully that made a lot of sense. Um, if, if any questions, just leave a leave a comment in. Just leave a comment, and then I'll address the questions. And if you found this video to be helpful, like, subscribe, and um, share this video because I'll be posting up tons of videos that will help you do better and conquer chemistry. And then in the next uh, series, I'll be posting up a video talking about more of the exceptions to uh, the Lewis structures. All right, keep practicing, and I'll see you next time.